All right, so when it comes to making babies, there are two basic possibilities. The would-be parents can do it themselves or they can get help. The help can be professional from a fertility clinic with specialized doctors, state-of-the-art labs, and fees running well into the thousands. Or it can be, well, not that. And that's where Sperm Donation World comes in. That's a network of almost 40,000 donors and clients who connect in every sense of the word outside the medical and legal apparatus that you or a friend or relative have probably utilized. The group, if not the idea, originated with Adam Hooper, a serial sperm donor who figures he's fathered at least 20 babies in at least four countries. Hooper also hosts the Sperm Donation World podcast, and he joins me tonight uh, from New Zealand. Also with us, Hooper's biggest staff donor. Uh, it's one interesting way of putting it. Uh, Kyle Gordy, uh, who has fathered 47 children uh, around the world. All right, Adam, I'm going to start with you. Um, I have so many questions here. Um, some I don't even know if they're appropriate for TV, but here we go. Um, so. Like, do you go out and actually have sex with all of these women all, all around the world? Uh, no, unfortunately, I'm a bit more disciplined than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, look, if I was having sex with everyone, I'd become an STD risk. So I'm, I, I do it in the car. I do, I do it in one of these cups here and uh, I hand it over and that way everyone remains safe. And so, okay, so, so, so it's all through, through the cup. Um, I mean, is it like freaky to have babies all over the place, Adam? Is, do you ever like, think about how many there are out there? Well, I've got a mother's group that they're all connected with and they've actually become really great friends. And I've got an, an eight-year-old and 11-year-old myself. And they go and meet them and they play with them. They're all best friends. So it's a very unique uh, world that I've stumbled upon. I didn't really plan for my life to turn out this way, but there was a lack of donors in um, countries such as Australia, the UK, and of course I'm in New Zealand now, uh, where they don't get paid to donate. So it comes down to two different types of men who donate, guys with uh, an EQ and guys who'd prefer just to do it anonymously, which is in America, which is more the common way. And uh, uh, so in Australia and all these other countries there, we really value that personal relationship, you know, making, forming that friendship, knowing that the child can ask these questions as they grow up and get those answers. Because what we found is with the clinics in America and, you know, some European countries as well, when it's anonymous, these children who grow up donor conceived, they have a lot of trauma and uh, they're speaking up really loud and clear about not having that ability to be able to speak to their donor and ask those questions as they grow up and, and with this way the mums can instant message me i can go to group meetups and meet them or i can do a video call so it's it's really flexible yeah it's, it's really interesting um kyle i want to bring you in uh you're apparently the number one donor with the group uh is it the same as with adam is it all through sending it in the cups or is it ever you go and actually you know meet up with the women face to face so pretty much um we usually do it in a cup, but sometimes, uh, you know, we do meet up if they want to do it naturally, uh, which is just sex. Uh, pretty much we would exchange STD results and then we would do it, um, you know, but that's not very often. Maybe one out of 10 women uh, vibe for the natural approach, but for the vast majority of them, I just do it in a cup. Uh, they get a syringe and they suck up the sperm from a little... Uh, sterile cup and inject it in the back seat of their car. Oh my gosh. And, you know, two weeks later, you know, they find out if they're pregnant or not. Wow, it's <laughs> fascinating. I mean, so the one, I'm just, I just want to go back to the one out of 10 time. I can't stop thinking about it when you actually meet up with the women and have sex with these women. I mean, is it ever awkward? I mean, do, I don't know, are you in a relationship? Is your significant other cool with that? Uh, no, I'm actually single. I, I don't have any girlfriend, uh, but of course I'm open to it. So if any women are looking for a potential partner, you can contact me on my Instagram, KyleGordy1234. There you go. Wow. But, uh, so I'm, so I'm looking for suitors right now. I'm on the, I'm, I'm open right now and open to a potential relationship if I find a certain someone that is ready for me. But um, pretty much um, I'm just donating, helping women. Uh, obviously, I don't know if you heard, but I actually got denied entry into New Zealand. Um, because of uh, I didn't admit to being a sperm donor. Um, it's not illegal to donate, but when they asked me to come in, um, I should have said, yes, I'm a sperm donor, but um, I'm getting it sorted out right now, and they actually welcome me into the country. I just need to pretty much say, yeah, I'm a sperm donor. Um, I'm helping these women for free. I'm covering my own travel costs. And so, so, Adam, let me ask you, are there any concerns about... Um 
like child support? I mean, the way the laws are in different countries, could anyone ever come after you later and say, look, you have to pay up now. This is technically your kid. So, yeah, the laws are all different around the world, and especially in America, there's different states. And my understanding is California, that Kyle's in, is actually pretty good for um, artificial insemination procedure. Uh, doing natural insemination, obviously, most countries around the world see that as you're the legal parent of the child. And uh, so I'm in Australia predominantly uh, with Sperm Donation Australia and then Sperm Donation New Zealand that I'm trying to take off over here and promote because there's a big lack of donors there. The, the laws in these countries are pretty good. And the podcast Sperm Donation World that you can um, listen to on Spotify and all that, um, it speaks to lawyers. I speak to lawyers and, and we ask those questions so people from that relative, relative country uh, can get a you know feel for it. Is there any concern about like an emotional attachment? Are you ever worried that um, either you could become overly emotionally attached? I mean, I think you 20, 20 kids, right? Um, or that perhaps the opposite could happen where you'll have all of these families demanding more from you and you didn't really fully think that was gonna happen? Well, that's why I do the group events. I feel when you know I do a group event, all my kids go, well, my, my children go there and then all their kids go there as well. And most of the time, the kids don't really care about me. I'm not the cool one. They go off right. and play with the other kids. So I'm the, the, I'm the uncool father, you know, just like any other dad, probably with kids growing up and kids playing in, in daycare and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But um, I have a magical moment when I'm with all these um, um, surrounding people. And, but at the end of the day, I go home to my two children and they're, they're enough of rat bags for themselves to keep me yeah. uh, entertained. <laughs> So Kyle, I'm curious, when you go out and you meet with the women and you get them pregnant, are these women who are normally married and, and are looking to have a child you know, within, within their marriage? Are they single women? Uh, it, it, it varies, but the majority of the women I've helped have been like lesbian couples. Uh, I've also had a few single moms by choice, and I've also had a few straight couples where the husband was either infertile or the husband had some kind of genetic issues that really prevent him from having a child or the child to be born with some severe, you know, disability or something like that. Yeah. So those are usually the three types of situations. But for the most part, uh, the lesbian couples, and they usually contact me on my Instagram, KyleGordy1234, <laughs> and uh, we talk about it and we meet up and, um, you know, I'm so, respectful of anyone's choice. I only have 20 seconds left, but Adam, I want to get you to explain this really quick, which surprised me. This is all free, apparently, for people. Um, how do you manage to do this for free? Like, what's the, what's the catch? I think you build something and they'll come. Like, the people who join these communities are really respectful and they don't want the tr they don't want the drama the trauma um child support or child custody that's why the chew is in this route so i think this makes it really easy community to run when you've got people that are like-minded coming in and joining it it's fascinating uh thank you both for coming on tonight really appreciate it adam hooper and kyle gordy uh, we hope you have a good night thank you for watching Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.